السلام علیکم میم Rosanna, how are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing good, ma'am. How are you? I'm good, Alhamdulillah. Let's start with the lecture. All right. Okay. Uh, Rosanna, this is our uh, specification. I'm sure that you yeah. are going to have this with you at the moment. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. All right. So we are doing the managing information and knowledge, and this is unit number 12. Now, what actually the aim of this unit is, let's read that. This is going to provide us the learner, the understanding of the importance of information and knowledge to the organizations and the key concepts of managing information and knowledge in a business setting. So we have to keep in mind that whatsoever we are going to talk about, it is the it will be about the information and knowledge, but the context is going to be the corporate sector, the organizations, the company. Now, the learners will gain an understanding of the sources of information and knowledge, how this is shared and ensuring its reliability and validity, whether it is based on the true facts and logics or not. In addition, there is an opportunity to understand the policies, procedures, legislation, and best practices for the managing information. Now, these terms are basically <clears throat> the part of the learning outcomes, which we will be doing it later on. All right. Now, what is the guidance for the assessment? In order to achieve this unit, the learners must produce work which demonstrate the achievement of the learning outcomes at the standards provided by the AC's assessment criteria. Now, here you can see that we are having the learning outcomes. Uh, learning outcome number one, here it is. Two, three, and four. So for this course, we're having four LOs. So whenever I'm going to say about LOs, this means we are talking about the learning outcomes. And beside the learning outcomes, we are having the assessment criteria. These are the sub part of it. To gain the pass grade, we are going to talk only for the assessment criteria 1.1 and 1.2. But obviously, we want good grades. So for the minute part, we are going to do that as well. That is known as 1 and 1. But in total, these all are known as assessment criteria. <clears throat> okay. So learners will need to agree with the tutors on the appropriate organization and country on which base, uh, to which uh, base their study. Now, it could happen that in the assignments, in the assignment brief, we could have the questions which are going to be related with the organizations, like we have to do the research on it. So they could be from Saudi, it could be from the Canada, it could be uh, Bangladesh, Pakistan, whatsoever. It depends on you. And definitely I will help you out as well. And users need to ensure the organization chosen is suitable. SME that is the small medium enterprises. Now it is very easy to grab the examples of multinational company whenever we search from the internet. But it is appropriate for your level because you guys are level four. <clears throat> we are going to touch the SMEs only. SMEs are recommended as larger organizations are often too complex and assessing the information required can be challenging. Why they have told us? Because we had a case in previous uh, for my LO4 student that they used the name for another brand, which is quite a big brand in our uh, nation, and they don't have weaknesses. So we don't combat with the fulfillment of the command words. That is why they introduced that we have to use SMEs only. We're not going to touch the MNCs or the multinationals. Learners work. Uh, Ma'am, I, I mean, uh, SME is full form. I didn't get that. Small, medium enterprise. Oh, oh, oh small, yeah. medium enterprise. The smaller organizations or the medium scaled. Learner work should be illustrated with the real world examples and should demonstrate substantial coverage of the unit indicative content. No. It is always recommended whenever you write or jot down the answer, you should keep the examples as well. Now, it could be fictional, the examples. It could be from the real world. It depends on you. With this, beside or under this specification, we are having the indicative content. Now, what is indicative content? This, These are the key points which you have to use while doing the assignment. Even my lectures are made exactly from these indicative content. But obviously, the uh, summary, the amount of data which I've added in your lecture it is quite comprised. It is way too uh, less. For example, if I talk about the LO1, here it is. It says, understand the meaning and sources of information and knowledge for the workplace. Now, this is the whole 
you can see holistic view of the topic and we are having details for it. That is, they have provided us that these are the definitions you can touch for the particular topic. It is very easy. Definitely when I'm gonna share with you the assignment briefs, the questions for your assignment, I'll teach you how you're going to write the answers with the help of indicative content and uh, command verbs plus the suggested evidence. Obviously, I cannot show you the assignment brief at the moment, but right under beneath the assignment brief, we do have the suggested evidence. This means uh, they, are, they told us via the edge that what things we have to add in the answers and what not. There? Yes, ma'am. Yes. This is the list for the command verbs. Now, it is the way to essential part for this course and for your all the courses in this degree. So these are the list for the command verbs and which we will be using in the units and assignments. For example, we just taught a read about the word analyze. So what that means, this means we are going to break the subject and so on. The answers, we have to picture skew according to the command verbs. Whatsoever the command verb is, we are going to jot down the answer according to the uh, command verb, whatever it says. Sometimes a few of the command verbs, they talk about strengths and weaknesses. A few of the command verbs talk about uh, importance and so on. These are the slides. Let's start with the lecture. Any questions? The one which I demonstrate you right now regarding specifications or command verbs. And then now I got it now. now. Okay. Uh, we will be completing the whole LO1 today, inshallah, in this class. Let's start with the LO1, what it says. Understand the meaning and sources of information and knowledge for the workplace. Now, understanding the meaning and sources of information and knowledge for the workplace is crucial for making informed decisions and achieving organizational goals. In general, when we talk about information and knowledge uh, in the context of organization, what it means? It means we're going to talk about important decisions. It could be strategic work, and we want to align our objectives with the goals of organization. It could be mission, it could be vision statement. Now, these sources can be categorized based on various dimensions, including the origin of the information and the nature of the data. That is where the information is needed. It could be qualitative data, it could be quantitative, it could be primary, it could be second. We don't know what kind of information it is and the nature of the data. Now, the first point or the first thing would be the primary and secondary sources. Now, these are the original materials or the first-hand information, the first or the raw material, the fresh one. They include data obtained through research, surveys, experiments, observations, direct experiences. Primary sources are often more reliable and credible. That is, how do we fetch the first-hand information? By doing the research on certain topics, by taking clues and the reviews to the surveys when they fill the forms, experimenting on two groups and more than two groups, observations by observing the surroundings and direct experiences. That is one-to-one -one, uh, talk or one-to-one -one any incident. However, the secondary source, these are the interpretations or the analysis of the primary sources. That is when we are going to fetch the data, that is the first-hand information, we have to analyze that. We have to interpret that in our own words through certain uh, data streams. They can include books, articles, other literature that discusses the reviews or synthesizes the information from the primary sources. Secondary sources can provide valuable insights and perspectives, but may not always be as reliable as primary sources because primary sources, we are doing it by our own selves. It is so raw, it is fresh, and we are so confident about it. But for the secondary, we don't know who has researched the book, who has written the book, whether it is an authentic data or not. <sighs> then we have qualitative and quantitative data. Now for the qualitative, it says this type of data is descriptive and often deals with the qualities, characteristics, and non-numerical information that is, uh, which deals with the quality, with the absurds. It includes observations, interviews, case studies, open-ended survey responses. Like in the interview, what is going uh, going on there? There is one interview. There is there are lots of interview, and there is only one interviewer. He is taking your interview, so we are fetching the information from one uh, person to another. Then the case studies, they are based on different topics. There are the sub elements 
of the abstract from the methodologies of thesis. Quantitative, however, is a numerical and measurable often collected through structured methods such as surveys, experiments, statistical analysis. Now, whenever we talk about the quantitative data, this means this means, this means we're going to talk about maths, numerics, formulas, how we are going to conduct the survey. There's a whole field background behind that. There are certain tools, there are certain techniques, there are certain softwares, for example, uh, for the statistical analysis, the econometrics one, in the subject for the econometrics, people use SPSS office. It is the best one to predict what is going to happen next with the aspect of the charts and graphs and observations. Quantitative data is essential for making statistical inferences, analyzing trends, identifying patterns or relationships within the large data sets. When we are going to have large information, specifically for five years, 10 years, or more than that, we are going to opt for those measures and techniques to make our data more reliable, authenticative. Then we have internal and external sources. For the internal, it says the data and the information generated within the organization. They can be financial records, employee performance reports, customer consumer feedback, internal memos. Now, internal sources means anything which is happening inside the premises of an organization. Now, it could be any discussion with your the manager or employee where you're working for your group. It could be for the financial records, for example, um, income statement, statement of financial position, uh, balance sheet, and so on. For the external sources, it says these encompasses the data and information obtained from outside the organization. They can include market research reports, industry analysis, government publication information from the competitors, consumer suppliers, and other stakeholders. Make sure that in the internal and external sources, we are going to divide the group of stakeholders as well. Now, the stakeholders are those people who have the ability and charge to do whatever they want to do in the organization. For example, if I talk about the internal sources, this means we're going to talk about the internal stakeholders as well. Now, those are the board of directors. Those are your employees, the workers, the suppliers. Whereas when I talk about the external sources, we are going to talk about the stakeholders, which are external as well. That is the government, the consumers. You know, that helps the organization understand the market trends, consumer preferences, regulatory changes, and industry best practices. Now, this is for sure that whenever we want to produce something and we want to be competitive in the market, we have to take the instinct from the preferences of the consumers, what they like, what they don't. And then the process of demand and supply goes on. And definitely your economic students do definitely know that what demand, supply, scarcity, every these terms are. Now, this is was the whole holistic approach for the understanding level low one. Now for the assessment criteria 1.1, it says, explain the meaning of information and knowledge and their interrelationship. That is, we're going to talk in depth about what information is, what knowledge is, and what is the connection between both of it, both of them. The command verb explain means make something clear to someone by describing or revealing relevant information in more detail. Now, whenever they are going to ask you the same question in the assignment brief, in different perspective, we are going to have the scenario, obviously. It should be detailed. And a general a criteria of writing an answer is always to start with an introductory paragraph. You can add detail with adding examples or importance. Then start with the main body text. That is, relate your answer with the command verb and all the points which are mentioned in the indicative content with the suggested evidence as well. And in the end, always add conclusion or recommendation. This is the proper way to write an answer. And this is what I expect from my candidates to write in the assignment briefs too, because I'm a lecturer as well. I'm an assessor as well. So that is why I'm telling you these things in the start. The concepts of information and knowledge are interconnected, but distinct in their meanings and applications within organizational context, because we're doing the perspective in the vision of an organization. So both the meanings, both the deviation changes. For example, information. 
Now, this refers to the data that has been collected internally or externally from the various sources. It doesn't matter whether the information is first hand, second hand, that is, primary or secondary, qualitative or quantitative, internal or external. We only have, um, we can say, concern that we want the information. It can include raw facts, figures, statistics, observations that have been gathered and organized for the references or the analysis. It may be structured or unstructured and serve as a foundation for the knowledge generation and decision making. So first and first is always information. Then we are going to derive that into the knowledge aspect. First, we fetch the information, then we are going to talk about the knowledge. Now, there are certain categories of the sources, internal and external information. Data generated within the organization, such as financial records, operational metrics, employee performance reports. Now, these are the few examples of the internal information. If anybody talks about internal information, this means we're going to talk about the financial records. One aspect of financial record is the income statement. Obviously, in the income statement, we, are, we talk about we talk about the sales, cost of goods sold, purchases, expenses, net profit. So these kinds of information we can only fetch or get from the internal uh, matrices of the organization. Whereas for the external, data obtained from the sources outside the organization, including market research, reports, industry analysis, information from the competitors, consumers, suppliers, and other stakeholders. It's external information, just like external sources. And it is and from the external stakeholder perspective as well. Are you clear that what information is? In general, it is very funny that- uh, No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Actually, due to network and everything, I couldn't get it. So if you repeat again, I'm so sorry, ma'am. <laughs> OK, no problem. The information one, beginning the one you just uh, said before the categories. Oh, uh, from here. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I think uh, they give uh, maybe I think the second point of it, but just generally, I want to know what exactly the information mean. Mostly, I want to know like. Oh, okay. In general, if I talk about what information is or the summary which we just did in the slide ten. This means we are going to collect the information, fetch the information, produce the information, or take the information from the internal sources. That is your organization. That is from the board of directors, from the employees, from the workers, from the suppliers. What the information could look like? It could be in the form of <clears throat> first-hand information. It could be in the form of secondary information as well. Because information doesn't mean it should be fresh it means that it should be present there in the organization. Then afterwards, we take the knowledge of it. Knowledge could be in the form of books, articles, and so on. Other than this, raw facts. Raw facts could be how much sale was in this year and what was the sale revenue, uh, sale or revenue ratio was in the last year. It could be raw facts and figures, statistics, observations. They have been gathered and organized for the references or the analysis phases. This is what the information is in general. Like in this chart, when I was giving you the demo for the specification, I was providing you the information. Now we are talking about the knowledge. You are perceiving it in detail that what each and every term is. Did you get it now? Oh, yes, ma'am. Now I just have a doubt for internal information and uh, external. Oh, okay. that's like I have a doubt. I didn't get that properly. Let's start with the internal first. Data generated within the organization, such as financial records, operational metrics, and employee performance reports. So these are the only kinds of it. In general, what the internal information is, the information aspect which we are generating, the data which we are generating to gain the information within the premises of an organization. For example, when we make the financial statement, it could be statement of financial position or the income statement. We talk about sales. We talk about sorry. We talk about the um, revenue, cost of goods sold, expenses, uh, purchases. Now, how we are going to fetch the data for it? Obviously, by doing the calculations, by asking for the receipts from the suppliers checking the connections and the connectivity with the peer groups. This is how we take the internal information. 
whereas external information, data obtained from the sources outside the organization, that is, it could be from the competitors. You want something, you want uh, to do a comparison or you want to conduct a research in your organization, for example. Now, obviously you cannot rely on the information which is based in the organization. You're going to take the data from your competitors, from your rivals, from the suppliers, from the consumers, the most important component of an organization, and even the external stakeholders. When we take the data from them, only um, then the external information is possible. Now, is this clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It's cleared now. Yeah, okay. Very clear. Right. Now, we're done with the information, what it is. Let's start with the knowledge. Knowledge is the understanding and awareness that is derived from the analysis and synthesis of the information, along with the integration of the data, opinions, facts, and conclusions. It represents a deeper comprehension of the underlying patterns, relationships, and implications present in the collected information. Now let's derive or understand it word by word. Knowledge is all about the awareness that we get from the synthesis or the analysis of the information. Whatever we have done in the information part, the external, the internal part, and the sources of it, we are going to analyze them. We are going to interpret that. That is what the knowledge is. We are going to interpret that in the opinions. What do you think? What I think? What others think? What my consumers think? What the board of directors think? What the stakeholders think? What are your opinions? What are uh, definitely when we are going to talk about the opinions, we are going to talk about the facts and figures as well. When we are going to propose any budget or a proposal in the organization, we have to prove that through the uh, facts and figures, whether it is going to be a fruitful situation for the organization or not, whether we are going to opt for more profit or not. This is what knowledge is. You have the information, now it is your ability whether to opt for it or not. You have taken my, uh, like, understand the topic specification, what managing information and knowledge is going to be about. We are going to talk about the SMEs. We are going to talk about the real-life examples. We are going to talk about information and knowledge specifically. Now, what now we are doing, we are gaining the knowledge, what these terms actually mean. We're talking it on the basis of facts and figures. All the data which I'm providing you, it is authentic. It is from the authentic lens and references. Clear? Yes, ma'am. All right. These are categories of the sources. In the knowledge, we're having the primary source, secondary, qualitative, and most probably quantitative as well. If you remember in the start of the LON when we were discussing it, we did discuss what the internal and external sources are, and we did discuss that what the primary, secondary, internal, uh, the quantitative and the qualitative data, uh, qualitative data is. Now these lie under the knowledge part. Yes. For the primary source, original materials or the first hand information obtained through the research, surveys, experiments, and direct experiences. Primary source is always the raw material. The information which we by ourselves do the research. Secondary sources, however, interpretations or the analysis of the primary sources often found in the books, articles, and other literature. That is whatsoever we did in the primary source, we conduct a survey, we are going to analyze that. We are going to interpret that, that 20% uh, people were agreeing and other 80% were not agreeing. This is the analysis, this is the interpretation of that survey which we did conduct in the primary source. However, for the qualitative data, it says uh, the information collected from the observation, interviews, and open-ended survey responses. Now, open-ended survey responses are those responses in which we have a direct contact with the person who is filling up the survey questions or the questionnaires. We can directly ask you why you feel like you are giving us three points or you are giving us five points. And can you, could you repeat again? Uh, I didn't get that. In the quality, uh, quantitative data, for example, yes. for the open-ended survey responses, we are having a direct contact with the person who is filling up the questionnaires or the surveys. We can ask them why they are filling or giving up five stars, three stars, or the ratings. 
because it is an open ended they can uh, give us their own reviews as well for example what do you think you're rating us five star what do you think that if we want to conduct a survey or we want to add up a new product in our extreme line what is going to be the result? and now this is the interrelationship of information and knowledge Now this lies in the process of transforming the raw data into meaningful insights and understanding very simple when we fetch a data which is very new for example when the covid came now we talk about it in way too general we have so many past papers for it we have so many pieces articles abstracts but when it came way too new nobody knew about it the covid 19 what was that we were taking the information we were taking the information and now we have an intense knowledge of it and the knowledge is in the shape of books articles whatsoever you name it and we have the data for it information serves as the raw material for the knowledge creation while the knowledge in turn informs decision making and drives actions within an organization this is the main difference between both of them information is going to be way too fresh data which we are fetching for the purpose to create the knowledge and knowledge is basically decision making process which we do this for the for taking the actions for the organization within the premises of it it could be um, any sort of a decision is the difference clear to you now because the whole topic subject is depending on information and knowledge yes ma'am i understand okay effective utilization of both information and knowledge is essential for fostering innovation improving the performance and achieving the organizational objectives way too easy when we are going to inculcate both of the aspects information and knowledge in the organization this means we have to um, improve our research and development that is the r&d we are going to produce new innovative products we are going to improve the performance of our employees and with it we are going to achieve the objectives of the organization as example a market team is analyzing consumer data to understand buying patterns and preferences the raw data collected from the various sources such as sales transactions website interactions and consumer feedback forms represent the information this is the way to start of the exam it's a marketing team and they are here for to analyze the consumer data of the uh, buying patterns and preferences what they buy more what are what is their preferences through data analysis and interpretation the team identifies trends correlations and consumer behavior insights turning the raw data into meaningful meaningful information in the first aspect they de- collected the data now they are going to do the secondary information on it that is they are going to interpret and analyze it as team members discuss and synthesize this information they draw upon their collective experience expertise and industry knowledge to derive actionable insights and strategic recommendations in this scenario the transformation of the raw data into actionable insights exemplifies the interrelationship between information and knowledge in a business context so this was the whole scenario in we like literally in four paragraphs that what the information and knowledge is from the perspective of marketing team now this is assessment criteria 1.2 analyze the potential sources of information for the workplace that is we're going to talk about the um, sources through which we grasp the information for the people who are working in the organization within the premises of it here the command verb is analyzed and this means breaking the subject or complex situations into separate parts and examine each part in detail identify the main issues and show how the main ideas are related to practice and why they are important reference to the current research or theory may support the analysis so you are going to define and explain in detail whatever the term is asked in the question with the supporting examples then you can talk about the importance you can talk about the problems and the solutions as well and in the end you have to rectify that with a reference from where you have taken the data from where you have taken the aspect for the particular that is a uh, answer
This uh, is the meaning for the word analyze. Potential sources of information for the workplace can be categorized into internal and external sources. These sources can provide valuable insights and data that contribute to inform decision-making and effective management. The first aspect is the internal sources. In this, we are having the past data, that is historical data generated within the organization, such as sales figure, production metrics, consumer feedback, and it can provide insights into events and patterns over time. For example, now they have given the example uh, to us as well for this particular past data point, that a retail company can analyze its past sales data to identify seasonal trends and consumer preferences. That is, this is a retail organization and they are considering their past data, the sales data, for example, of the year 2022. They are in 2023 and they are analyzing the data of 2022. Why? Because they want to see that what were the seasonal trends at that time. In the month of March, what were people wearing most? Is this clear? Ma'am, I did not get the potential source of information. Is it like comes with the internal sources or like comes with past data like that? Potential sources of information like, it, means the authenticity of the information, the authentic data. It is not fabricated. It is a true authentic source. In the potential, we are having the internal and external both. These are the sub-elements of it. Yes, ma'am. Now clear. Okay. If, so, past okay. Data, pa so past data means it's like the previous data. Uh, like historical data generated with the information is it related to currently resources like those internal and external resources like the potential resources of information is it like re related to that because uh, you have it's mentioned there in this point like internal resources like past data means you as you mentioned they're like considering the past data which were like for example seasonal trends non-seasonal trends is it like the count onto that right Basically, internal sources is an aspect of the potential sources. And under the internal sources, we are having few points. One of it is the past data. Okay. Like this is the subheading for it. In the internal sources, okay. where the first point is the past data. Okay. Now I understood. Yeah. Okay. And with the past data, we are having past records, performance records, financial records, and KPIs. These all were the internal sources. Then we are going to talk about afterwards what the external sources are. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Again, if you find any ambiguity or there is a question, you have to ask by your own self. All right? Yes. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> okay. Now, past records. Previous reports, project documentation, meeting minutes can serve as a reference for understanding the organization's history, decision-making processes, and lessons learned from the previous experiences. For example, a construction company can refer to the past project records to understand the challenges and success of the similar projects. For example, um, literally it's a true example too, we were making two houses. In one house, we were having a problem that we were not able to make a powder room in the ground floor. So it was a huge problem for us. We were able to make the place for the uh, walking wardrobe, but it wasn't possible to make the room. So we discussed with the architect and the interior designer how we are going to opt for it. So they like literally did few mathematical steps in the graph in the like the whole map of the house, and they were able to produce the space for the powder room. This is what the past record is. They were having the experiences of one home. That is why they were able to produce that to the same thing to another uh, to the uh, to another house. This is what the past record is. Then prefer a performance record. Data related to employee performance. That is, employee are the people who are working in the organization. They are the working peer groups and colleagues including productivity, attendance, and skill development, which can help in assessing individual and team contributions within the organization. Why the performance of employee is necessary in the organization? It is important because they are working for us. They are working for the heads, for the board of directors, for the organization, because we are going to get the profit in the end. So their attendance, their skill development, that is, whether they're up to date with the information and knowledge or to the latest news and trends or not, uh, how they can collaborate and they can do the teamwork with the uh, peer groups. 
A human resource department, HRM, can use performance records to identify top performing employees in areas for improvement. That is very simple. I teach so many students. Now, there are students which are pathetic for me. Few students are way too excellent for me. Like, I literally wait for the classes so that I can talk to them. They are so interesting. They ask the questions. They have always, uh, like, you know, uh, a question for me. That is, ma'am, we were having problem here. What is your opinion, right? Whether it is their personal life, whether it is their professional life. In both aspects, I am a mentor for them. However, my few students, they are not even there in the class, but they do perform well in their assignment briefs. So it is way too hectic for me to check the assignment as a teacher, then to assess them as an assessor as well. Clear this example as well? Or the concept of the record? Yes, ma'am, I understood. So, which means like this uh, performance record, past records is only mostly the record. Like, for example, past debt and past records, it's mostly about their past for collecting information and then they get these records. And for perform uh, the performance records, is like it's like known for like the for heads, maybe taking the skill development, like taking help yeah. or like they're done with the communication. Probably, with yes, them. it's like this. Yes. Yeah. Then we have financial records. Internal financial statements, including the balance sheets, income statements, and cash flow statements, offer insights into the organization's financial health, profitability, and cash flow management. Now, these all terms are the accounting terms. And I believe even in the business studies, we do have a little bit of contact with these information, now, these terms. Yes. Yeah. So you already know that word, the balance sheet, which is now known as financial statement of position and income statements. Now, these are all the financial records. For example, a finance manager can analyze financial records to assess the company's financial stability and identify the areas for cost reduction. Maybe an organization, ABC, you are doing a lot of expenditure <clears throat> on many of the projects going on. They're not having enough uh, budget in the hand, in the back, but they are doing so much expense. So the finance manager, what he or she can do, he can or she can do an analysis for it. And then they can do, take the decisions according. Then we have KPIs. These are known as the key performance indicators. Now, the internal metrics set to measure the specific aspects of the performance, such as sales growth, consumer satisfaction, and operational efficiency. It provides a way to monitor the progress towards the organization goals. Now, there are certain techniques, measures, tools through which we measure the performance of the employee, of our working peer groups. One of it is known as the key performance indicator. In this, what we are actually analyzing, we are analyzing the sales growth, what is the great, uh, growth of the sales or revenue? What is the rate of satisfaction of consumers, satisfaction score, CSR, and operational efficiency, that is daily efficiency of your working ability in an organization. A marketing team can track KPIs such as conversion rates and consumer acquisition costs to evaluate the effectiveness of marketing campaigns. Because we already are spending a lot of amount on the advertisement campaigns when we are in the organization. So what we can do is we can evaluate the effectiveness of the consumer acquisition cost and the conversion rates. Conversion rates of whatever the currency rate is going on in the organization. Expect through which they are trading. It could be in the dollars, it could be in the Chinese bond. The last one for the internal sources, performance reviews. Employee performance evaluations, feedback, appraisals provide valuable information for assessing individual and team accomplishments, identifying skill gaps, and facilitating the professional development. A team leader can use performance reviews to provide constructive feedback and set performance goals for the team members. Now, what the performance review is, in general, if we talk, the performance of the workers, of the employees, which are working in the organization, how we can assess them, how we can depict whether they are uh, on a scale of 9 to 10, whether they are doing great, uh, what do we call that, uh, great work or not. 
are they enough capable to perform a certain XYZ project or not? And it is only possible when we have a relationship of giving the information and gaining the feedback at the same time. What is the instinct of the workers? What they feel, what they think, what they uh, uh, like feel like what is important for them to thrive in this competitive environment. Claire? <clears throat> uh, no, ma'am, I didn't get it at all. Because <laughs> you mentioned like performance services, like the performance of workers in an organization. Like I didn't understand like here, appraisals provide valuable information for assessing individual and team accomplishments. You didn't understand this line? Uh, no, ma'am, I didn't understand that at all. Okay. Appraisals. Now, what are appraisals? Giving them the promotion from one degree to another degree, from one department to another department, how it is possible. When we're going to talk and give have a discussion in a room, it could be in the form of team members, it could be in the form of individual, whether we want to discuss with the team whether this person, XYZ person, or Ali, for example, is he capable to get promoted to another level or not? That is what review of the performance is. Clear? Yes, ma'am, now clear. Now we are done with the internal sources. Let's start with the external sources. In this, we're having internet third-party data houses, regional and national statistics, only three points are added in the external sources. External sources. Online resources, including industry reports, market research studies, new articles, valuable insights into market trends, consumer preferences, and industry developments, for example. Like, let's do the example later on. What the internet is why it is important as an external source. Because we can easily get the data from outside the nation. And whenever we search, for example, if you want to search customer, just write on the Google or the Google Scholar, the word customer. If I talk, I write that in the Google Scholar, I'm going to have mm -hmm. hundreds and thousands of papers from the specific Google Scholar. They are, uh, the Google Scholar is responsible to give me and provide me with so many theses and with the articles. This is the beauty of the internet. Now, example, a tech company can gather market insights from industry-specific websites and new portraits or portals to stay updated on emerging technologies and competitor strategies. If you are a tech company, then definitely you have to be updated with what new technology is coming in the market. You have to analyze and synthesize that in your organization. And you have to give the training to the employees as well. So internet is going to play a very crucial, crucial part in this aspect. <clears throat> then we have third-party data houses. External agencies and data providers collect and analyze data from the various sources offering comprehensive data sets and marketing intelligence that can support strategic decision making. Now, third party data houses, we are not fetching the data by ourselves. We are relying on the agents. They are responsible for recruiting the data to us, whether it is a first hand information, whether it is a second hand information. We don't know how they gather it. Maybe they are going to get it from, uh, like, through the link of an ISI underground information. It all depends on those agencies. For instance, a retail chain can part with a third party data house to assess the consumer behavior data and demographic information for targeted marketing campaigns. For example, uh, Zara. There are specifically a branding, it's just an example, branding the toddlers or the infants clothes. So they are going to contact the external agencies and they are going to do the research on their aspect, on their behalf, that what is the main demographic, what is the trend, what is the demand between them. This is how third-party data houses work. Regional and national statistics. Data published by the government agencies, that is, as, uh, state, bank, state banks, uh, main state national banks, such as census data. Now, this happens after every 10 years. It is the data to which we fetch the information of how many people live uh, in one house. 
employment statistics, how many people are employed, how many people are unemployed, and economic indicators. You're an economic student, you definitely know that what are the indicators of economics are. Do you know them or do you remember it? I think we didn't study this economic indicator. We didn't study it's that. not possible. You have done the I I economics. Yeah, we have done. Yeah, I've done that. But maybe exactly, maybe not remember. But macro level, these are fine. But maybe this one, I didn't get it. Okay. Exactly. Economic indicators include unemployment, employment, inflation, deflation, monetary policies, fiscal policies. Oh, yeah. Those, those I know. Yeah. Monetary. Yeah. Then, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. This one I know. Yeah, okay. Balance of payment. These things. Yeah. Yes. Provide a macro level understanding of the regional and national business environment. Now the micro. Whenever we talk about the micro, this means we're going to talk about the less of the economic indicators. But when we're talking about the macro level, this means we're going to talk about the unemployment rate, inflation, balance of payment accounts. And this is balance of account, payment account. We are having the current account, a capital account and the financial account. These three accounts combine and make the BOP. By leveraging these internal and external sources of information, organizations can gain valuable insights, make informed decisions, and develop effective strategies to remain competitive and achieve their business objectives. So this was the whole purpose why we talk about sources of information. And it we discuss the internal and the external sources separately. Clear the assessment criteria 1.1? 1. 1? Mm, yes. Okay. Now let's do the real life scenario for it. Uh, then I'll end the class. Okay. A retail company, which is an XYZ retail, it is planning to launch a new product line of eco-friendly household goods. That is, they're going to talk that this organization is working on environmentally friendly goods. Recycle grids. To inform their decision making process and develop effective marketing strategies, the marketing team at XYZ Retail conducts research to gather relevant information from the various sources. The first one, the internal sources, the past data. The scenario is clear to you, right, Anna Rosanna? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay. The marketing team analyzes sales data from the previous product launches to identify the trends and consumer preferences. Performance records. They review the performance records of existing products to understand which categories perform well and which ones need improvement. For the financial records, it says, financial reports provide insights into the company's budget allocation, revenue streams, and profitability, helping the team assess the feasibility of launching a new product line. KPIs. KPIs such as Consumer Satisfaction Score, CS, CSS, Consumer Retention Rates, CRR, and Sales Conversion Rates offer valuable metrics to measure the success of marketing campaigns. Performance Reviews. Employee feedback and performance reviews can provide insights into the internal processes and potential areas for improvement in marketing strategies. For the external sources, internet. The marketing team conducts online research to gather information about the consumer trends, competitive products, and industry best practices. Third-party data houses. They subscribe to data services for the purchase. Market research reports from third-party data houses to assess the comprehensive data on consumer behavior. Market trends and competitor analysis. For the regional and national statistics, the government agencies and industry uh, <coughs> associations publish reports and statistics on the consumer demographics, economic indicators, and market trends, which provide valuable insights into target markets and industry dynamics. By leveraging these internal and external sources of information, the marketing team of XYZ Retail can make informed decisions and develop effective strategies to successfully launch their new eco-friendly product line in the market. So this was the example which supports the learning outcome of one assessment criteria, 1.2. Uh, yes. Clear? Yes, ma'am. 
Okay. Now, uh, most probably in the next class, we will be doing the merit part. So Ma'am, no for I have a question. So, is there a difference between, like, I think there's a difference between this uh, information about qualitative and quantitative. Maybe for knowledge, it didn't come for qua uh, quality, uh, quantitative data. There was only qualitative data. So, quantitative uh, no. data is not there for the knowledge. No, no. Uh, okay. I remember for the information, we are only having yes. the internal and external sources. But for yeah. the knowledge, we are going to discuss about the primary, secondary, qualitative, and quantitative. Oh, yes. Yeah, I understand. Because obviously, qualitative and quantitative, they have no room for information. They are always based on knowledge. You have information already, and then you are going to do whatever you want to do. Is it clear to you now? It's more important. Yeah, for now, it's clear. In case if I have, even I can ask you the next class also. Okay, no it's problem. It's like if I can briefly go through, and if after getting the videos, I'm waiting for the lecture videos, so that if in case if I have a problem, then obviously my mom ask you. Okay, no problem. Thank you so much, Rosanna, for joining in time. Take care. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am.